Hey brothers and sisters, welcome to the channel. Brothers and sisters, I want to share such an amazing word with you. I had such an amazing, humbling encounter that I need to share. Uh, and I'm going to start this word by saying how many of us are walking around with an inferiority complex? How many of us are walking around thinking and believing, declaring with our mouths how that we are inferior in some way or another without even realizing it? How many of us say, oh, I can't get this job because I'm black? How many of us are saying, I can't get this job because I'm, I'm, I'm a woman or whatever it is? How many of us saying, I don't stand a chance because I'm not married? How many of us are saying, I, 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 I lack in this area because I'm an orphan or my mother died at a young age? Um, I'm an inadequate father or whatever because I wasn't raised in a household with a man. I was raised by a single mother. Whatever it is, how many of us are walking around with an inferiority complex? Not only are we walking around with it, we decree it with our mouth. We say it with our mouth that that is who we are. It's a part of our identity as if it's in our DNA. How many of us are doing that? Uh, well, my brothers and sisters, I had an encounter where I did something similar and I wasn't even aware I was doing that and I was humbled. I was humbled and I want to share this word with you and I pray by the mighty name of Jesus that by the end of this video you're gonna go and search your heart and today you're gonna let go of that because that's not who you are the God who created you you were created in his image and he can fill each and every single area in your life where you think there is need he can fill that gap uh, my brother and sisters before I even go anywhere I just want to read a, a, a definition of inferiority complex let me just read that definition quickly uh, inferiority complex if we google inferiority complex it says it's a basic feeling of inadequacy and insecurity deriving from actual or imagined physical or psychological deficiency all right that's what it says now what what happened to me so i was looking at houses and i was looking at beautiful houses you know when you look at your dream kind of houses and i was saying to my friend because i had looked at the bond calculator looked at the salaries that minimum salary that you need to be able to qualify for a decent house so i was saying to my friend i truly don't understand how a single person can afford a nice house with a single income i feel this is what i decreed with my mouth i feel like um for you to be able to have a nice house you need to be in a relationship or a marriage setup where there is dual income i decreed it in my mouth and i further went on to say people like me who are single parents who are single don't stand a chance i decreed that inferiority with my mouth all right my friend said something that i will never forget he said, but Tato, why do you say that? Do you not see that you live a life that is so similar to people in dual household, house, in, uh, dual income household? Do you not realize that you get to make decisions that some people who are even in setups like that can't make? Why? Because you are in partnership with the Lord. Now, before I even go further to expound on what he meant what i need to tell you is that this is one of the people i've been praying about saying god this person they believe there's a god but they have never seen the evidence of you this is one of the people who i pray about to say let me be your miracle this person said to me you quit your job there are so many people out there who would love to quit that job but before they can quit their jobs they have to either go to their husband or their wife and consult with them if they do are lucky enough to be able to do that one of the other partners in the house needs to be working so that they can still be income to sustain the household you were able to do that why because you are in partnership with the lord it's been over a year and he has sustained you he has kept you you have never not had food in your fridge you have never not paid rent are you not in partnership with the lord are you not in partnership with the lord 
that blew my mind. Not only because of the truth of what was said, but because of the person who delivered it. It wasn't a person who comes and, and speaks words like me to people to encourage them and make them see that. This was a person who I prayed will see the glory of God, hopefully through me in their life. Look at God. Now I'm going to turn to scripture and I'm going to go to scripture and I'm going to show you how God has been there in situations where people looked at the situation and they were in and they saw an inferiority in the situations they were in. Second Kings chapter 4, we are talking, uh, there's Elisha, Elisha and the jar of oil. This woman's husband has died. A God-fearing serving man has died and the wife is destitute well not destitute but the wife is being um, constantly harassed by the people the husband owed you know those people that are harassing her this woman cries to Elisha and she says your servant, my husband, is dead. You know that your servant honored the Lord with fear. I'm reading um, 2 Second Kings chapter 4 from verse, verse 1. But the man to whom he owed money has come to take my two children to make them serve him. Elisha, Elisha says to her, what can I do for you? What can I do for you? Tell me what do you have in your house? And she says, your woman servant has nothing in her house except a jar of oil. She has nothing. That's how she starts it. She has nothing but a jar of oil. She doesn't have a jar of oil. She has nothing but a jar of oil. If you continue to read the story, you get, you, you get to find out or know that. Elisha says, go to all your neighbors. Borrow as much jars of oil as you can then go into your house the very house that you do have and the little oil that you do have and start pouring into those jars start pouring into those jars this woman does exactly that she pours and pours and pours until she asks for another jar and her son says there is absolutely no more jars left Elisha says to her, go and pay those people the debt and what remains, use it to sustain you and your children. She saw herself as a widow, as a widower. She saw herself as inferior, left with all these debts. And she saw herself as having nothing, absolutely nothing, but a jar of oil. What did the man of God do? Because of who he is, the man we serve, he is Jehovah Jireh. He provided. He provided. And there was more than enough more than enough, not only to, to settle the debt, but enough to sustain her after that. We go further. There is the story in the Bible of, of um, uh, when, when Jesus was serving the multitude and um, he, he tells the disciples, he asks the disciples what they have, what, what do you have so that we can, we can serve these people. I, I don't know if you guys remember, if we read in Matthew chapter 14, I'm going to just read from 17, that Jesus asked the disciples, what do we have? And the disciple says, we have here only five loaves of bread and two fish. We only have five loaves of bread and two fish. He then says, bring them to me, bring them to me. And what did he do? Being the son of God, he raised them up to the heavens and started to break bread and soon every single one of the multitude was not only filled 
But not, o- not only did they get to eat and be satisfied. This is what the Bible then says. If you go all the way down to uh, verse 20. This is still Matthew chapter 14. We go to verse 20. It says, they all ate and were satisfied. And the disciples picked up 12 bucketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. The number of those who ate was about 5,000 men, besides women and children. Besides women and children. They only had five loaves of bread and two fish. Inferiority complex. You present it from a point of lack. You present it from a point of inadequacy insufficiency we decree it so many times in our day we declare it so many times in our day my brother and sister as we end this video this is what i want to say to you i want you to go to that private place in your heart and i want you to ask yourself this question in what area have you declared yourself declared yourself inferior in what area yourself have you decreed it with your mouth. Today is the day when you change that mindset. Today is the day is where we end and we break those chains that you've changed yourself to. And I want to end this video by reading to you Philippians chapter 4 verse 4. And I say to you, rejoice in the Lord always. I say again, rejoice. You who belong in the Lord, Rejoice, be joyful, boast in the one you serve. As long as there is God in the equation, we needed the Son of Man to perform that miracle. We needed a man of, of God, sorry, not the, the Son of Man, we needed the Son of God, being Jesus, to break that bread. We needed the man of God, Elisha. We need the God we serve. We need the word of God. Let's decree and declare the word of God. Because with him in the equation, with him in the sentence, we are more than, more than able. We are more than enough. We are more than sufficient. We are more than adequate. We are more than, we are bursting out with more. Therefore, we can have each and every single thing in the mighty name of Jesus. You will be the one who will change the story. You will be the one who will change the narrative. You will be the one who will set a new normal in the generations that have come before you. Because of you, the children of your children after will get to say, I come from a household like this. I come from a background like this. Why? Because my grandmother, my grandfather, he served a living God. And because of that, he broke the pattern. He broke the chains in the mighty name of Jesus. Decree it and declare it. You are a generational curse breaker in the mighty name of Jesus. All these I say with the power and the fierce love of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.